We have another question from the audience. Uh, one of the things I like the most about this collaboration, right? It's truly bridging theory and practice. In fact, what Columbia Business School is all about. Um, you know, academia and, and the front lines of business at Google, at American Express, as well as your previous uh, organizations. And directly, a uh, question exactly about that. Uh, where have you seen QRI really drive significant revenue from an organization? Do you have an example? Um, yeah. Um... I'm just trying to think which one because I actually use this a lot. Um, you know, I think one of the, the most telling examples was um, I went into a uh, GM and uh, we were presenting, you know, uh, global results and um, looking across 47 different markets. And there was a couple of results that I actually um, put in the appendix because it was an, an outlier, didn't form, didn't follow the, the pattern of the other data. and. He asked a very telling question during this, and uh, he said, is there something you didn't expect to see? Is there something that, that surprised you? Um, we talked about this uh, a, a bit when we talked about QI. And I'm like, actually there was. And when I went and shared um, this data in the appendix, he leaned over to his chief of staff, and he's like, where did we do that test pilot that we didn't tell anyone about? <laughs> And this, uh, his chief of staff uh, listed four markets. And as he read these four markets, these test markets lined up perfectly where we saw double digit increases um, versus any other market. And I put that in, in the appendix. And as we now dove into this, because he asked that question, it became the basis um, really for the business case for the funding for something called rapid on-site support. Um, and um, as a result of that, the customer experience was better, um, our service and support to the customers. And this really was the basis for a, a really retooling, reimagining um, how we offered support to the customers um, in real time and gave them enough uh, you know, facts, evidence to really go and build a business case. So it changed the customer experience it changed our, uh, you know, net promoter score, and it changed really, you know, how this uh, GM uh, went before the board to make a business case. And I have a, a few examples as well. Certainly, I can think back to the the dot com days when there seemingly was no data to compare against. But I'll, I'll go back to a different example. I previously talked about going out and seeing seventy eight customers in one hundred and twenty days because. I was asked to go build a business around this one thing, blank sheet of paper, one word on it. Well, it turns out that word was grid computing, which is now a precursor word to virtualization, which if you're in the cloud business, that is a core pillar. And the sequence of events was, we have no data. Wait a minute, we understand technology. And it was really brought to life going up and down that pyramid, as we said before, we had data, we started to do some analytics, we started to go talk to some customers, bring that information back, and constantly go back to the essential question. What business can we build around this? What problems are we solving? How can we open up different industries? So over and over again, we went through that repeat cycle and actually built multiple billion dollar business, businesses across different product lines for IBM at the time, and there are many industries out there that are using all of this.